What's up, everybody? It's your man, Danelle, a.k.a. Small Guy Promotions, a.k.a. The Omaha Fatty, coming with another podcast episode of What's Up, Omaha? In this episode, I have two wonderful guests. We always have wonderful guests on the podcast, but we've got Tim and Angie today. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. good. Doing pretty well. How about you? I'm doing awesome. It's a wonderful Monday. (laughs) <laughs> yes it has been so tim and angie not only are they married but they're in business together and you guys have recently taken over one of our favorite places in downtown papillion diana's papillion tea shop yes yeah may 1st is when we officially took over yeah so still pretty new yeah so, you know, it's it's been, I'm sure it's been <laughs> a lot of work. We've talked about it a little bit and yes. just getting everything squared away and going and up and running and getting people used to it being under you guys now. <clears throat> do you guys, uh, and I, I assume that this might be a thing, do people ask you now, why is it called Diana's Papillion Tea Shop? Yeah. As, I mean, not me. I mean, I'm usually... I have gotten asked yeah. before, like, three probably times at least. Probably because they assume that she's Diana. Yeah, <laughs> I have gotten so. called Diana, too. And um, they, people do ask, why is it called Diana's Pavilion Tea Shop? And then I reply, well, Diana was the original owner, and that's why it's named Diana's Pavilion Tea Shop, because she essentially started the tea shop. And yes. just to commemorate her and her memory... That's why it's still called Diana's Papillion Tea Shop. We actually have her uh, picture right in front of her window. And there's been quite a few people actually just stopping to look at her picture, which is really nice. Even from outside, they'll Mm -hmm. see it from outside walking by and they'll just stop and stare at it. Yeah. Yeah. And and for anyone who may be watching or listening and you're not familiar with the tea shop, um, you know, unfortunately, Diana, you know, got sick and passed away and... Um, you know, the previous owner, Julie, she worked with Diana. She was, Julie was a retired teacher and didn't expect to be working full-time at the tea shop. Um, so what happened was she was working part-time and when Diana got sick, uh, you know, she took over the place and, uh, you know, I, I know it had to be tough for her, but she loved the place. She didn't want to be done with it. And she took it over again. It was unexpected. It was during her retirement and now she's actually retired from the tea shop and passed it on to you guys and julia's totally healthy (laughs) as far as we know (laughs) Um, but she wanted to spend more time enjoying life because you know she had retired for a reason and that's where you guys came in Uh, you guys though you just took over in may you're not new to the tea shop you guys had been with the tea shop working there for a while right yeah, yeah like three like years three four years somewhere around there um and the story is kind of uh, fun because we actually were new to tea um we had actually worked at a shop in the mall before it closed down so we had known loose leaf tea and just looking for a new place Probably on we the found shop. this um no because i don't want to well people well yeah to find out it's up to you. Um. <laughs> the shop was Tivana. Um, we I only said it because there's, we had a lot of customers who would say they used to go to Tivana and then they're happy that they have they find someone that used to work there and we can help make similar try to make yeah. blends to mimic the yeah. But um, yeah, that's have. that's why I wanted to yeah. say that just in case people yeah. are looking for a tea <laughs> place because one lady she came and said she hasn't found a tea place since Tivana closed. Like she hasn't been it's satisfied. Crazy. And that's been years since that yeah, place it's... closed. And so returning to the story, uh, we were looking for another loose leaf tea place and I Google it and this place came up. So, and that's how we started coming here as regular customers. Yeah. Do you guys live in Papillion? We do. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. That... We live pretty close to <laughs> Shadow Lake. So it's, we're actually within walking distance. Yeah. So, so that was perfect. Oh, yeah. It's definitely helped a lot. And so I, I think I met you guys. Uh, it was one of the busier times. I don't know if it was Winter Wonderland or not. It might I, have been. I think, so. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was a while back. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was three years ago. Because it was. 
because that's when we moved uh, to Papillion, my wife and kids were out of town for Winter Wonderland. And I came to the shop and I was by myself and I got welcome to the neighborhood and community pretty much. Yeah, people in Papillion are so welcoming and we got in that too as a new business, we like owner, new owners. Um, we gotten a lot of help and a lot of people just welcoming us. Yeah, I can't really even give a shout out to all the businesses because there's so many. Like when we <laughs> took over, almost everyone from, not even just from Papillion, from other cities have just done it. They've gone up and out of their way to support us. It's been amazing. And it's yeah, all of our neighbors have been. Not something I'm used to. So it was really cool to get that feeling of hospitality mm -hmm. and it's a real familial feeling in the area now. And it's really nice. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, man. And that's part of what we talked to when I've been in is just how you guys partner with other businesses and whatnot. And, you know, it's, it's tough being a small business owner sometimes. And it's nice to have that community feel where you can lean on other people or, you know, you yeah. just someone from another business wanting to extend a hand and help, you know, and, and not even out of gaining something back in return. They just want to help you. Right. Yeah. And that's always cool. I mean, how can we not be successful if there's so many people who want to help? Like, exactly. Yeah. It's crazy. Cause you grow up thinking, you know, everyone's out for themselves or if they want something, if, if they help you, they want something in return, but no, no one has asked anything in return no. that's helped us at yeah. all. So it's been really cool. Yeah. I think one person, but the whole, like, it was just, it, it was pretty much just promote me when you have the chance. It wasn't like, oh, do this for me or sell this for me. It's just whenever you get a chance to bring my name up, yeah, yeah. please do. But nothing like physical, no monetary value, stuff like that. Yeah. They went super mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, that's really cool. And uh, especially when you're new. Now, as we talked about, you guys have experience in the field, in the industry of tea, and you've even worked at the tea shop for the three years. But there's still a difference when you actually take over as a business owner. Can you guys talk a little bit about the difference in that experience and what it's like to go from just being a person working at the business and then the transition period and what it's like when you actually take over? Yeah, it was quite different. I mean, I remember we would just show up at random hours at yeah. Tivona and um, you know, there's always, there were certain rules that you had to follow, you know, make sure you push this item or... Um, and there was Being all these part of a bigger corporation stuff like that is very competitive and you have to push certain items that not necessarily are the best yep and i think as we took over the shop that's what we learned it's like trying to listen to the customers more and trying to figure out what's best for them and you know if they're not they don't have much money they can't afford that much then just try and guide them well you might want to do this instead of this mm -hmm. um and just yeah it's just quite completely different from what we learned um yeah i don't i i took pretty much none of the notes that i learned from tivana over <laughs> to this because i don't look at this as a way to make money a way to get rich i look at this just to make people happy mm -hmm. and i you know i'm in it for the customer experience that's why, uh, like, there's been customers who've just, they've sat in our seating room all day. They buy one drink and they'll just be there all day. They'll apologize for it. Like, I'm sorry, take up your time. And like, no, that's, that's what I like to see. Cause I know it's a comforting space for people. And that's what I like the most. I mean, obviously like selling stuff cause it's good to make money, but right. I, I like that people just relax, just can relax so and feel safe. Mm -hmm. We actually have a guy who he just moved to Pavilion. I think he said. And he works from home. He's starting a new job. And he came in one day and asked if he could work from home at our shop. And yeah. I was like, yeah, knock yourself out. And came in the next day and spent all day at the shop just working uh, on his computer. computer yeah. yeah. And Not like at least three people do that, I yeah, think. Yeah. They'll come in and just yeah. work on stuff. And it's a good feeling to know that they can do that. And it's nice to not have to upsell because i hate it actually i didn't even do it i got yelled at for that but i <laughs> i don't upsell i don't if customers don't need it there's no reason to make them buy it like that's absolutely pointless yeah. yep 
I'd rather have people want to come back because they liked the experience instead of, oh, they pushed this on me. I spent all this money and I hate it. And then they're stuck. I, yeah. I can't do it. Yep. I, I, I have a, a little background in retail as well and managing a store at West Roads Mall for a, a couple of years. And so I know how that upsell goes. They're like, oh, sell this. And then when you get up to the register, sell this. And, you know, exactly. It's and it's like, it's draining. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was, there's, it's easy to do because it's not really, I mean, it's, especially in the sale items, but I still don't like doing that. It just yeah. doesn't feel right. People it, appreciate it better when you're more honest. Exactly. Them. And I'll tell that to customers, even now yeah. when customers try and buy stuff, um, like even if it's not a lot of money, even if it's just like a $10 purchase, if there's items in there, and they're, especially when they're new to loose leaf tea, they'll buy one of our, um, like our steepers. And I mean, they, they go for a decent amount of money. I mean, they're not expensive, but I'll usually refer them to, since if they're just getting into it, I'll refer them to our pouches because they're the cheapest option we have for steeping. Yeah, and then and, if they don't like it, then they don't, you know, they don't spend that much money on it. Yeah. And it's not a waste. Yeah, and that's, and like you said, I, I think that like people appreciate someone who's genuine and, and being real with them uh, and, and it's not really sales pitchy. Um, you know, I, I would much rather buy something from someone who's not, you know, shoving shoving it down my throat and just saying, oh, what about this? What about this? And then, you know, you just add adding on and adding on. It's like, no, just I want you to come and have a, and it's a tea shop. You guys have a place, like you just said, you have people who come in and they just want to hang out and relax. They feel comfortable there. You want it to be welcoming and you don't want to be pushy. So that makes sense. Yeah, and that's one thing. Um, Angie spent one day reorganizing the shops. The entire front room now is just a seating area. Yeah. So all the tables and everything moved up into the front room. Um, I stayed out of it because she had her own <laughs> vision. I, once I have I'm ambition, just, I just, like, just, just leave me and I'll, I'll get it done. <laughs> yeah everyone's like oh it looks nice that's all her i yeah. spent the day just restocking things it's that's all her nice well why tea what what drew you guys to tea how did that come to be so so that's more that's kind of an um i don't think we used to i mean no. you used to drink tea but not like it was just regular tea like at restaurants and like store bond oddly in that scenario, nothing really drew us towards tea. I mean, there was one time we went to Tivana. We used to want to avoid loose leaf tea because it it's more expensive than well, going to buy Especially when bad we tea. went through there. If, well, they always did the samples. So we, of course, tried the samples and stuff like that. But in places like that, retail places like that, it's super expensive. Yeah. So we would try and avoid as much as we could to yeah. not spend that much money. Yeah, we only got into that because one day um, they're doing like a special where it's you you tear off this thing and it says how much you get a percentage off. We got like 75% off. Yeah. And I That's guess they only have like good. three cards like that. So we went in and got a whole bunch of stuff that it turned out it was really cheap overall. So it's not like we spent a lot of money, but. It was really good. Um, they explained, you know, the benefits that we did carry over. A lot of the benefits of loose leaf tea because it's we learn so, so much lot healthier. From that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, I forgot, like you weren't working at the time, and you just you were trying to get a job, and yeah, they were hiring, and they were hiring because they were shutting down. Um, I think they were still having like a year or so left. Um, so they were trying to hire people in and I'm like, well, I have nothing to lose. So I'll just go ahead and apply. I don't know that it was like an apply and go ahead and do your interview. So yeah. I'm like, well, okay, I'll go ahead and do the interview. And she like the manager at the time, she just hired me. And then I just asked him, well, cause I think at the time he wanted I, to I sent an application. So the, at the time, the place I worked became a super toxic work environment and it affected my health significantly yeah so i thought you know what i just want out so i applied at the same place we did online she goes in for her interview i um 
hopefully my employers at the time aren't following me still because I called in sick to take <laughs> a <good> interview. <laughs> and while I was there, well, she was there. She asked about mine because she got a call back. I didn't get anything. So she asked about mine and uh, the man hiring manager, she's like, I didn't even, I didn't see anything. She didn't see. I think see, they had the wrong phone number they, you know, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Something happened. So she's like, well, since you're here, do you want to interview? I'm like, why not? I mean, I'm there. I have nothing to lose. And we both yeah. got hired on the spot. Yeah. So um, it was a very nice, interesting experience. We learned a lot from it. Yes. A lot of informative stuff that we did carry over. The benefits are health benefits are of tea, not because we don't, we don't have the insurance that Tivana gave us anymore. Yeah. Um, no, the tea health benefits are amazing and it's it's nice to spread that to people too mm -hmm. just because it it's i know it's changed my life a lot yeah um, yeah definitely yeah really it's it's just i guess long story short it just we got just happened to stumble into hooked. it by chance i mean <laughs> there's no it happened. <laughs> we got hooked. it happened yeah, there's no plan to get there <laughs> well and how did the conversation switch to you guys just working at uh, diana's tea shop to eventually becoming the owners uh, was that a plan that was set out early on or very early on I it actually say. was yeah. it was actually the first year um so as Tivana was closing we were trying to find new shops or new other tea places to direct that's customers towards yeah. and um that's when we found the shop originally and so what we did was we took a we tried it we liked it so that way we knew we could we weren't just directing customers to some random place. It was mm -hmm. a place that we enjoyed, that we knew the tea was good. So when customers came, where am I going to get tea now? We just handed out the business cards and yeah. it helped the shop significantly. I mean, from what I remember, it tripled the business at the tea shop. So uh, we continued to help out. We had two months or a whole month where we didn't have to work because we got a really nice severance. It was like two months severance unless you wanted to apply at um, Starbucks. Um, but we took that, we took that month and we just helped out at the tea shop as much as we could that entire time. And then, uh, June rolls around, Papillion Days comes and she invites us to sit in the shop during the parade watch and watch the parade. The parade. Yeah, and she approached us during the parade and just asked when she's done in about five to 10 years, would we like to take over? And then fast forward to earlier this year, um, Angie, right. I was yeah. working at the daycare near as um, Apple Tree, um, and I was a Spanish teacher there for a very short amount of time. But I came just after work to get a drink, and then she approached me saying, "Hey, I'd like to talk to you." Um, and then she pretty much told me, "Like I'm getting ready to take." Um, you know, to finally just give you guys the shop and then just uh, retire myself. So, um, and then he was picking me up. So we waited for him and then she pretty much told him too. And that's how it, um, how yeah. the this started. And I think that was like early in February yeah. or somewhere around there. There's still snow on the ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I know we had talked about it too, uh, just with, the pandemic going on and, and, and whatnot, you know, a lot of people's values realign and priorities change a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and that was just the thing where Julie just said, hey, you know, I want to go out and enjoy my time with my family yes. more and, and whatnot. And that that's understandable. Like you can't, mm -hmm. you can't knock someone for what they want to do anyway. And, and right. wanting to spend more time with family, that's, you know, that's a given. That's like, okay, do, you know, my, my thing has always been family first. Um, you yeah. know, I would put on events and stuff and people would say something about their family. They couldn't make it because of whatever reason. I'm like, hey, man, no, <laughs> don't, you don't need to apologize to me. Family first. Do whatever you need to do to take care of your family. Then we'll worry about the business stuff later. So, I mean, kudos to Julie for having the confidence and you guys and just being OK with stepping away and knowing that it would be in good hands with you guys. So I, I think that's really cool of Julie. Yeah, it was, it was very, we felt very honored because, yeah, that's not something that's you take lightly. That's definitely yeah. something that shows that there's a lot of trust there. Yeah, yeah. And we really, we are very appreciative of that. It was nice to know that we could earn that trust. Yeah. 
Did, does Julie still stop by and have tea or anything? Or she does occasionally. I think she went on vacation for a little bit, and she just yeah. got back recently. But yeah, she stops by for tea every now and then. Nice. And now, too, I'm sorry. No, no, I was gonna add, it's like it's an honor to to be able to take on Diana's legacy and just keep that dream going on. And honestly, if it wasn't for her, I think there wouldn't be a tea shop. So it's really cool that she started this dream. And then thanks to her, you know, Julie was able to take over and have that, share that dream with her, even for a little bit. And even though we didn't um, actually know her, um, it's, to me, it's, you know, I think her for starting this because it's always been my dream to have a shop. Yeah. I just didn't know what. And um, since we got into tea, I mean, this is definitely something that I'm passionate about. Yeah. And that's cool. I mean, to be excited about something like that and, and you know, it, it's got to be, I don't know, just a really good feeling to take that over. And like you said, all that stuff that ties into it and just being connected to the history of it. Yeah. Um, speaking of Diana, and it's 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 starting to it's it's about to be fall, um, <laughs> so that means that yes, I think I know, gonna, where yes. Yes. I know where you're going. Yes, yes. we are going to continue the hot chocolate. Yes, the hot chocolate. Oh, I don't Ryan know. Is just a question of when we want to start. No, no Diana. joke. We've been getting that question <laughs> since June. Maybe hopefully once it starts Late getting May and June, cool. people were asking, oh, you're going to keep continuing it. And um, last month, someone actually asked for it. She's like, yeah. is it too soon to get the hot chocolate? Yes. It was still hot. Wait till it so. gets cold. <laughs> Wait till it's not 90 degrees outside. Yeah. Wait till it's like, you know, at least 50. Just wait a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I wasn't going to ask when you guys were going to have it, but I was just going to say whatever Diana, whatever ingredients she decided to use to make this hot chocolate. And I know it's, you know, uh, you know, like a family secret, a, a business secret, whatever it is. And I, I don't have like a lot of favorites of things, but that hot chocolate, when I first drank that hot chocolate at Winter Wonderland or whenever it was, I was like, oh, I, I had to tell my wife and kids about it. It was so good. And just whenever that comes around, I'm like, yeah, that's uh, the tea's cool, but the hot chocolate, like it just it, it just grabbed me and I have to get that if I come in when it's cold. That's definitely one of the things you get to look forward to like in the holidays and you feel like a kid, like, yeah. you know, looking forward to it. So yeah, we're definitely keeping that. And um, we plan on definitely keeping the tradition alive. Um, so for her good. and her family it's so good if you guys are listening and you go to the tea shop and it's winter it's like a little colder than it is now just give it a try just give it a try uh, but yes i have i'll put my seal of approval on the hot chocolate <laughs> uh, now getting to the tea um my daughter and i we've always wondered what the process was of making the tea so i asked recently and you guys kind of told me what the process was of that like you guys do it all it doesn't come to your shop the way that it is can you guys take us through the process of what you go through to make a tea and then how you uh brainstorm up new concepts for new flavors yeah definitely so um we so we order the tea we get a wholesaler that. Sally, we can't afford ourselves to have our own land and whatnot. <laughs> Eventually, be, that'd be nice. Definitely be nice to have yeah. our own. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, Plot of land. Yeah, I, I had the name, but I can't think of it right now. <laughs> I can't want to say rice fields, but no, we're not going to grow tea in a rice field. <laughs> um, I can't remember what they're called. The name escapes me right now, but just our too. own place to have tea grow. Um It'd be nice. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. I know it's super expensive, but I guess you have to bid for it at certain times of the year. So um, we get it from the wholesaler. Yes, because it's a little cheaper. And thankfully, our wholesaler actually gets the types of tea from the respective countries where they're best known from, like the green teas from Japan and China and the oolongs from China and I think Asia, right? Yeah. Or um, India. India. Yeah. Uh, just all the, the respective places that they come from. And which is really, really nice to tell people because they'll ask, oh, is this grown here? Is this grown here? Um, and then we bag it essentially ourselves. So it's, it's a process. You bag it 
um, mm -hmm. into our bags and whatnot and put all the instructions in it for people to be able to know what to, uh, how to make it. And each tea has to be specifically uh, steeped uh, to a certain temperature, a certain time. If not, you can probably burn it very easily. Um, so it'll taste bitter and not as good. Um, so yeah, you'll put the loose sleeve on your steeper, put your hot water um, in there, and then just steep it for however many minutes, and then uh, take off the le the loose sleeve, and then you have your give your tea. Your, your tea. And then we have gotten this question frequently lately. Uh, to make it iced, you do the same exact process, just pour it in yeah, a cup of ice. I mean, it's it's very straightforward. But um, yeah, there's no special process to it. It's just you make it and put it in a cup of ice and you're good to go. And when it comes to flavors, we just get samples. You try something and then if we think it's good enough where it might, people might like it, then we take, mm -hmm. take it out and just order a bit. And uh, which is kind of funny because one of the ones that we just recently did, we order a little bit and it's going like crazy. And then we're like, OK, well, we need to order more. Um, and then we try and do our own mixes because, I mean, we're kind of... Then our wholesaler ripped it off. Yeah. <laughs> we were trying to do a strawberry <laughs> banana. And then after a, like a month of trying, because it's, it's really hard because strawberry banana is a great taste, but when you're avoiding adding artificial flavors, flavor, like sweeteners yeah. and stuff, it's hard to mimic. But then after about a month, suddenly the wholesaler, oh, here's a strawberry banana tea. Mm. <laughs> yeah. They didn't have it. So we're just like, okay. And thankfully, our experience at Tibana and the people, our coworkers, kind of inspired us and uh, like pushed us to make our own kind of mixes because we would do that at Tibana. We just make our own mixes. So we play around with the tea every now and then and be like, okay, well, this might seem good with this. So we make yeah. our own, we're trying to make our own mixes, yeah. make it a little bit more original. Yeah, honestly, when it comes to deciding, we just throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. <laughs> we just, and we, That's and all right. So, it's been really good. I mean, it's I, no complaints. Everything seems yeah. to be well liked. Um, yeah, yeah. So what we do, if we're just curious, we'll um, when we place our orders, we'll just order like little sample packs, like not even maybe just like an ounce, if even that, that of different goes. varieties, and just see how it's how it goes. Mm -hmm. That's how I picked our we'll autumn mist because yeah. that autumn mist one is really good, and the candy apple, both those are pretty good and. We just happen to try those just by chance. Like, let's see how this is. Yeah. So, yeah. That actually, get apple we got because we we're trying to mimic um, an app. It's called Apple Tea, and from Germany. it's from Germany. And I didn't think to do it until one of our customers actually asked us if we could do something like that. Yeah, and like we said, a lot of our customers will ask you ask us, "Well, can you make something like this?" Like, or they come. They move from another state and they're like, oh, I used to have this tea. Okay, let's look at the ingredients. Let's see if we can make make the same thing or make it better. I had one that was 18 yeah. ingredients that <laughs> I, I took like 18 different things and just, I, I threw it together because it was a tea that I've never heard of and I've never had before. So I'm just like, I hope the person likes it because I have no idea what I'm doing with this combination. Yeah. And the mom came back and she goes, he liked that better than the actual tea. I, I hope he saved it because I don't know what I'd, I I just <laughs> guess on all of it. So I hope he I hope he makes it last. So, so do you guys try to sample like a good amount of them uh, before you put them out to the public? Like, do you taste test to see if you like it or not, or how how's that process? Yeah, we've sampled quite a few. Um, there's been some interesting ones that we decided no they're they're not safe for the public with that kind of flavor <laughs> then there's some that are just amazing like the before we had the shop there were there was a maple creme so the wholesaler had oh yeah for a while, we, were, a we were we were um, yeah we we were subscribed to a monthly box from the same uh wholesaler and we got the maple creme oolong, and we loved it. So our first order we took yeah. over the shop was a lot of that. It was, <laughs> it was amazing, and it's funny because it's a tea that it's good hot, but when it when you drink it cold, it is 
so much better. And it really throws everyone off because this, this the name makes you think of a hot tea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, oh, man, it is amazing cold. And, I yeah, that's definitely one of my favorites. And then um, the dragon fruit, a lot of people were asking who who have tried it when they found out that we were taking because she had julie had it as cold brew pouches and everyone who tried it loved it and when people found out that we were taking over they asked us a lot are you going to do this one in loose leaf and it was also our first order the maple cream and the dragon fruit were our first order for loose leaf teas because i mean they're both really good teas yeah Um, i actually have one friend who bought some and she messaged me Two nights ago, she's going to make ice cream with it. <laughs> nice. So we're going to see how that goes. Um, she she hasn't given me a, an update, so I don't know if it went well or not. Yeah. Now, is she just making it for home, or is this for a business? For home. I, for yeah, home, she has no business. I don't know. We might actually try and partner up with... Might talk to Grayley's. Yeah, we might talk to Grayley's. <laughs> Got a flavor this. idea for you. <laughs> well, you never know. I mean, there's so many different things that you know, the ice cream owners are doing these days with the flavors like Ted and Wally's and, you know, like I had said before, Grayley's, like you guys just said, and uh, was there cone flour? Those are some of the top ones in the area. And they just Ooh, have so many different flavors. Ice cream. Oh, my word. So good. So good. I can never have enough of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous being their neighbor. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sure. See across the street every day, all day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, we've gone I don't get there enough. Times during yeah. the day, huh? Angie, I just <laughs> run over there and get some ice cream, come back. Yeah, just for a quick break. Just, you know, hey, yeah. especially <laughs> now. I mean, maybe that'll food. take. Just do ice cream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe you guys can do a trade. Like, you guys let them have some hot chocolate in the winter and they give you some there ice you cream go. in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm so, work out. I mean, yeah. why not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, for people, who, you know, come to you guys a lot and they're they're like avid tea drinkers and they they buy it by the bag or whatever. You guys have a rewards program for that as well, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, we do have the um, punch card. Um, and so how that works is um, we have bags, like two to three ounce bags that are already prepackaged. And then um, if you get one, you get a punch. And then you can redeem it for, once you get 10 punches, you can redeem it for um, tea worth 765 or less with the obsession of, or specialties, which are more high, high-end teas, which are a little bit more expensive. Um, but yeah, that is a cool thing that we uh, kept going to from um, Julie, because um, Julie started it and then we kept it going. So um, yeah. we thought it was a really good idea. And, I think people appreciate it and like yeah. it. So and down the line, we are planning on like a more uh, digital system because um, yep. yeah. the company we go through for the sales and uh, whatnot, they offer a program where you can get like the plastic, you know, like the, the gift um, cards, plastic gift yeah. cards and whatnot. Or and you can use them on the side and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's definitely one of our goals is to be able to <clears> give them available because we have customers outside of the state and i think they can't get punch cards when they're in like maine yeah Yeah. so So a a reward system and gift cards for them would be a great thing to start for them yeah and so that's something we have that we want to do i'm glad you guys brought that up because i want to touch on that too because it's not just you guys it's scammers are all over the place yes oh my goodness when we found that out so yeah so and then we find another one Really? So that yes, just happened. Another one. I mean, the company or the site, they offer like various prices. We the most sketchy part was that it was like a thousand. A thousand dollars. That was the first thing that, I said. Who's buying a thousand dollars worth of tea? <laughs> like in one, like why? Yeah. I know why. That would take so long to redeem. I mean, unless you're gonna just buy the buy entire the stock store. of the yeah. shit like the store. I mean, <laughs> thankfully we didn't have anyone that. Um, no. That, that was tricked on our end, but there was a lot of people that... Well, we don't have anything like that right now. We don't yeah. have anything online, so <laughs> people know you can't. Most, I mean, our cars are certificates, so it's yep. not like 
you can renew them at online or anything like that. So yeah, it's so crazy. Um, That's what a lot of the companies said in that site too. It's like cease and desist because we don't even have gift cards. We just do certificates. Even if that, some didn't even do that. Well, and uh, the orthodontist, and I don't know if it's just like more like like papillion right now, like if they're going through different areas or what, but we go to uh, Holly Orthodontics and they were doing a giveaway on their Facebook page and Instagram page. And there was a company that was commenting on their threads uh, with a link saying, hey, go to this link uh, to be registered for the giveaway because they were doing like a $200 gift card to uh, Valas. And it's like, yeah, you don't, it said something like, you don't have to buy anything. The credit card number is just for such and such for registration. And I was like, why would you need a credit card to register for a giveaway? That doesn't, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I sent the message to Holly and I saw that they had actually already saw, this wasn't the first time that it had happened to them, but uh, yeah, there's just these scammers out there always trying to take advantage of people. And it's like, yeah. people don't fall for this stuff. <laughs> like, I know it's, and I can see why a lot of people do. I mean, some of it's, for me, it's a lot easier to see because I've worked in banking for so long. I can see a scam lot easier. I see why people fall for some of these things, but some of these sites make it look so obvious that it's not legit. Yeah. Again, $1,000 gift card yeah, for a small business. Ridiculous. Obviously, that's not going to be a thing. Yeah, yeah, that just, it doesn't make sense. So. And why would a small business go to a third party site to do gift cards? Yeah, it, does, it doesn't make sense. So PSA for this podcast, if you're watching again or listening, if it seems fishy or scammy, it may not be, but don't be afraid to question it. Like, don't get, you know, just don't Call get taken advantage of. Call message to business. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very simple to check most times. Or and, and a lot of that stuff that's fake, like Tim said, they make it obvious that it's not a legit <laughs> like site or company or whatever it is. Yeah, no. Can you find out? someone messaged us the first no, time? No, no, because I forgot what I was looking for. Oh, because, um, yeah, another heads up. Uh, if you go to our site, make sure it says Diana's Papillion Tea Shop, not Papillion Tea Shop, because the shop itself was named Papillion Tea Shop, and that site is still up. Um, that we might have to talk to the, the family. family about that. Um, so that site is still up, but it's not receiving anything. So we have had like at least two calls of people I made um, that made. Um, a purchase orders. on the old side and uh, we're like we can't do anything about it you're just gonna have to call your bank and then yep. get your money back through them because we didn't have anything to do with that sadly yep. but yeah <clears throat> just a heads up on that um yeah and i forgot what i was saying before that <laughs> that hasn't happened that happened more when we shortly after we took but over. yeah it that's why i was much. that's when how i ended mean. up going because i was trying to figure out how are people getting into that side instead yeah. of diana's pavilion tea shop and that's how it popped up the gift cards things pop up well, well you know with people and i talked about this with john uh from golden bowl uh on last week's podcast uh it it might be easier because a lot of people nowadays don't want to pick up the phone and actually call a place and talk to people. They want to do everything conveniently online. So sometimes it's easier to take advantage of those people because it's 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 like a quick process and you're probably rushing through it trying to save time and you're not looking at everything. So take your time, people. Make sure it's legit. <laughs> um, well, Tim, Angie, I've taken a lot of your time today. <laughs> um, where can people find you guys? I know we've talked about downtown Papillion, but can you tell someone who's never been uh, what the address is and exactly where you're located? And then where yeah. can they find you on social media? Yeah, definitely. So address-wise, it's going to be 134th South Washington Street. No, North Washington Street. North Washington. 134 North, North, North Washington, Washington Street. Street. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, North Washington Street and Suite 100. Um, so the best way I explain this to people who kind of know Papillion, but not streets very well, if you are going to downtown Papillion, the Runza on that street, we're on the same side as the Runza, just in the old looking buildings, we're in the exact middle. Yeah. So that's the best way I've described it. Um, if for a little farther out, the super target that's farther down the street, 
same side, just keep going towards 370 will be on the right side. So same side as the target, just keep going old buildings where the, uh, in the middle, that's the easiest way I can describe it. Cause usually that's, those are landmark locations. Yeah. So I figure they're the best way to go at it. And then we have Instagram and Facebook. And our site is www.dianaspapillionteashop.com. All right. Well, anything else that you guys would like the audience to know before we go? Yeah, sure. Uh, we are getting ready to do a murder mystery party in October. <laughs> we don't have the set date yet, but we just printed off the materials today. Yes. So we're, it's in the we're getting now. there. Nice. And uh, we, I did announce on Facebook today that we are planning to do study nights. I sent a, just a question out, what days weren't best uh, so far, Wednesdays in the lead. Uh, I thought Friday would be, so it's kind of a surprise to me, but I can see because, you know, students might have jobs in the weekends, but so we're planning that as soon as I wait a week to get enough results to see what day would work best for people. But other than that, a um, lot of surprises coming up. Yes. We have quite a few. So just kind of follow us on Facebook, Instagram, stay tuned. And I think that it'll be very pleasant for people to see. Nice. We do have... We're still working on the tea parties. Those yes. are still coming. It's just we want to make sure to give people the best experience and give them the best for their money. So that mm. might take a little bit longer than we expected. So yeah, we don't want to just slap things together and yeah. hope it works. We want to yeah. make sure that it will. We want to. I know we have a few expectations to live up to when it comes yeah. to that. And we want to. <laughs> hey, it those. makes sense. Yeah, if you're going to do it, make sure you do it right. <laughs> and the hot chocolate. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we might start that in October. So nice. Yeah. nice. That's when well, things get cool. One with your events that you were talking about. One thing that we didn't mention is you guys. We talked about partnering with other businesses. Uh, you guys also do offer pop ups from time to time. So make Correct. sure to tune into their page uh, to see what businesses are coming. They have food uh, businesses as well as merchandise businesses um crafts things like that so stay tuned or if you're interested in being one of those vendors make sure to reach out to those guys and contact them uh for details on that stuff as well so yeah definitely do that because we have you can reach us on facebook instagram for those and also if you come in and are just curious we do have a notepad you can just write down your name and yeah. number we have it where the pop-up would normally be we just little notebook just write it down i had someone come in and ask what the requirements are as long as you have a cert, if you're doing food, as long as it's a certified kitchen or you have a certificate of some sort, so you're or at least in the food, we have had a few people come in with they do a notice, um, too. So, as long as it's recognized by the state of Nebraska yeah. that you can legally sell it, then yeah, we you're more than welcome to just reach out to us, and that way none of us get in trouble because both we could and then the pop up might. Mm -hmm. So, we don't want to, yep. Step on anyone's toes. Yeah, totally makes sense. Well, thank you guys again so much for being on. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you're tuning in to the What's Up Omaha podcast, please help us out. As we ask every week, all you have to do is like, share, and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Um, and then if you're seeing it on Facebook or Twitter or wherever it's at, just retweet it or share it, tag someone. Just let them know about all the greatness that we have going on on the podcast. A lot of times it's just me talking, but when I have wonderful guests, I want to make sure that a lot of people see the podcast. So please help us by doing those things. And as we end every episode, smile, help someone else smile, laugh, and help someone else laugh all day, every day. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming on. Gladly. Bye. Take care. <laughs>